What's up guys, it's uh, 6.13 in the morning. I had a good video, a nice fun video where I met up with two different cousins. One of them just got married, you've seen him before. And then another one that just got into photography too, about a year ago. It's just nice to talk to someone else that kind of understands the world that I'm in. So I like hanging out with both of them. Plus, um, the photography one, she has uh, two kids that are roughly the age of mine, so I like taking my little one to go visit them a lot too. I had this video planned where I was gonna showcase everything we did the, over the weekend with them, but I do wanna start being a voice for men's mental health. I feel like it's a stigma in society right now for men to talk about their feelings. Traditionally, it's a sign of weakness to talk about how you feel or to show how you feel. I don't like that. I'm a very emotional person. I used to showcase it more so as anger. Then I just realized it was the only way I knew how to process my feelings. So I figured I was just gonna take a nice brief, uh, brief walk and share my thoughts on, this, on the matter. men's mental health. Not that I think it's more important than women's mental health. I'm not a woman. I don't think I have any place to tell a woman how she should think, how she should feel, and how she should interpret things. So I'm not going to speak about women's mental health. I'm going to specifically talk about the struggles I deal with, the struggles that men have to deal with, fathers, husbands, and young entrepreneurs. That's what I do have experience with. I am a husband. I am a father and I am trying to run a business. Those are the things I'm gonna to stick to talking about. We're conditioned from a very young age to not show weakness. And by weakness, things like crying. Crying is considered weakness. We're also conditioned to not express other feelings. So what we're left with is rage. Rage um, is, I, for some reason, rage is the only one that is a masculine emotion to show. Apparently, we're conditioned at a young age to only be mad. We've had a society of toxic masculinity, and I'm a victim of it. Like I said, as a teen, I was a very angry child. The first person to want to argue about everything. The whole point of this whole YouTube channel was specifically to showcase all the issues that come with being a creative husband, father, and business owner. Today, we're gonna to talk about my personal mental health. I don't wanna say I'm necessarily a sad person. I do have joy in my life. My daughter is probably the biggest source of my joy. Being able to do creative stuff in the field I wanna do, that brings me a lot of joy. Trying new things, trying new food. One of, the, one of my favorite things is breaking bread with people. I love doing that kind of stuff. Finding new restaurants, visiting new cities, that's my thing, as you can tell. I get discouraged very easily. And because of that, I tend to gravitate more towards people that are very encouraging. Just people that, that have that like personality trait, like they get excited, easily excitable people. Um, those are usually the people I, I like spending the most time with. As a teenager, I was in bands and I was constantly playing concerts. I wouldn't say I was necessarily a shy person. I loved being the center of attention. That's why I thrived doing music. I actually really do miss music and I plan to start doing it again. You know, as you get older, uh, you don't really do things like that that put you in the limelight as much. My mental health getting older is taking a dump because I don't have that like sense of praise as much as I did when I was a teenager. When I was a teenager, I was playing shows every weekend. Everyone was like, hey, what, should, what are you guys gonna play again? And where are you guys gonna play this weekend? And all that kind of stuff. So there was a lot of attention that I received. And you know, when we would play the shows, we had crowds and literally the all of our crowds were familiar faces. So we were very, uh, the community that my band did have was very tight knit. It wasn't just random faces cheering me on. It was people that we saw that go to every single show. It was just really encouraging seeing that kind of stuff, seeing people committed to you because they enjoy what you put out must have done it for me. Um, that's the only way I can explain it. I have felt as a teenager, very fulfilled doing that. 
As an adult, that fulfillment started to fade away. A lot of mental health issues come with that. Insecurity is probably the biggest one. I've come to realize that I rely on other people's opinions to feel my gratitude. I don't bring myself joy. I rely on other people to bring me joy. And that's a huge problem. It shouldn't be anyone else's job to make me happy. I have to learn how to make myself happy. I have to learn to be happy with myself. And, and that's something that I, I struggle with every day. I'm not necessarily happy with myself. I'm not sad. I don't want to kill myself. I don't hate myself. Um, there's a lot of qualities I really do like about myself. I like that I can brainstorm. That's probably one of my best assets is getting together with a team and coming up with ideas. And that's what I chose to do with my profession. So I do video and photography, but my business is getting with the, together with a client and coming up with branding ideas. I've been able to take what I think is my best asset, trying to build a successful company. It took a long time to get it off the ground. I was really inconsistent and that's part of the discouragement. Now there are, uh, you know, creeping doubts constantly. The main one being like, I'm not where I wanna be. Should I give up and do something more traditional? This pressure's placed on society and placed on culture, um, you know, that that bring a lot of doubt to to me per se. I haven't been able to give like my family what they should have by now. Like, I don't own my own home. I don't take my family out on vacation. Uh, we just kind of scrape by. We have a roof over our heads. We have enough to eat. We uh, actually eat <laughs> pretty well. <laughs> That's one thing that I definitely splurge on is food, as you can tell. I'm getting to my 30s, so by then you start getting a lot more realistic about things. So you know, there there comes that doubt. Like, am I did I make the wrong did I make the wrong choice for my family? Trying to pursue my own business. Traditionally, the male works and the wife stays at home with the kids, and that's not the case for me. Both I work and my wife work, and um, you know, she would jump at the chance, the opportunity of being able to just stay home with my daughter. And that's not something I can provide for her because of the choice I made. And so, you know, stuff like that, um, especially when I, there are other people in my family where their wives stay home and they're roughly the same age. And um, stuff like that does kind of weigh down on me. And then when that weighs down on me and I overthink it, and then it affects my work. And that's the one thing is just like, you don't have to be Pressed necessarily to have it impact your life. I have high anxiety. I get my my most anxiety at night. When I'm laying in bed, my mind is just racing with doubt. And I start thinking about everything that I've explained. My future, my current choices, that I'm not meeting the goals I'm setting, and all that kind of stuff just starts swirling around in my head. And so what I do, I work in the middle of the night. So because I know that I'm gonna be up anyway, and so I just work throughout the night. Luckily, work clears my head. I can get lost in my work. Um, I could just sit down and edit for hours and not even know that the whole day's passed by. So I'm very fortunate that I love to do what I do and that it helps me. I work until about four, five, six in the morning till I'm completely exhausted and my brain just shuts off and then wake up around 9, 9 a.m. to uh, tend to my daughter. It's been working for me, but then there's days like today. I just let the doubt get the best of me. I'm not the best husband. I'm not the best father. Um, there are, for me, for one, I am very impatient. And that is a huge problem when you have children. You have to learn to be very patient. And uh, same thing with, I guess, husband. They kind of go hand in hand. Whenever you're dealing with anybody else that you love, you really need a lot of patience. Like in the middle of everything, no matter how angry I am, I can kind of understand both sides of the story. So I can break down and analyze arguments as I'm doing them. So I don't necessarily have a problem apologizing. Normally I will tell my daughter, I'm sorry that I yelled at you like instantly. And I tell her and I try and get her to understand that I'm human too. And that was one of the conversations we had with my cousin 
Our parents had us at very young ages. They did the best that they could do with the resources they had. Were they perfect? No, by no means at all. Did I have a great childhood? I would definitely say I did. I don't have any complaints about my childhood whatsoever. It's funny because my parents watch my vlogs, so they're probably gonna be upset about this. If we bring things to their attention where they lack, where they have emotional trauma, where they struggle with dealing with a lot of um, issues they had growing up, uh, they get offended. They think that I'm saying that they're bad parents. I'm not. Um, just as I'm explaining my shortcomings right now, my failures, my doubts and stuff like that. I think that's the biggest difference between my generation and my parents' generation. That's, I think, the biggest difference. And so when I do tell my parents, I'm like, well, you did the best you could and all this stuff like that. Oh, so I was a terrible parent. No, I'm just saying like, I understand why you are the way you are because you had to deal with this. And I was like, just understand I'm the way I am because I had to deal with the way you are. And they don't like to hear that. And so, you know, you come to a point where you realize your parents aren't superheroes, which is why millennials invented vlogging. It's why we created social media. It was a way for us to put ourselves out there, hold ourselves accountable, be open and get everything out because we don't like bottling things up. You pretty much are doing a open journal. Sun's out, it's about seven o'clock. Got a cool little time lapse, but I basically want to close with this. Man, we got to do better. I'm going to hit you with a couple facts. Suicide, it's a 10th top killer in America. The highest suicide rate is middle-aged men. Men are 3.5 times more likely to commit suicide than women. Or those numbers alone should really open your eyes that there is definitely a problem when it comes to men and expressing their feelings. We gotta do better, guys. It's not weak to express yourself. It's very damaging and unhealthy to not let out how you feel. And that's why I started doing this. I know that guys can really feel like they don't wanna open up to someone and show themselves as weak. But guys, I really wanna encourage you. And at this point, it doesn't necessarily have to do with just men. Talk to someone, get it out somehow, do it through music, painting. There's tons of creative ways to really express yourself. Thank you guys for uh, paying attention to all the way through the end. Let me know down in the comments below. What are things you do uh, to really help with your mental health? I'm always up for trying new things. I really actually wanna start getting into stretching and yoga because I really need to start stretching. And I feel like yoga would be a nice way to really get into more of a meditational state of, of stretching. I'll leave you guys with that. Please subscribe, please like, and uh, hit me up on the socials, guys. Peace.